All right. Uh, okay, this is an unboxing for uh, Slick brand uh, SL57, which is a Strat copy um, that's distributed by Guitar Fetish. Um, and uh, let's dig in, see what's happening. So I'm going to open this up on the end. That's how they packaged it. Uh, this looks like it's in pretty good shape. No bumps or bruises from FedEx. Hopefully I won't cut myself. Although this, that'd probably get the video a lot more views though, right? Hey look, now we have animals, we're halfway there. All right, so in this box there ought to actually be Beyond the guitar, there should be a cable and some, uh, some locking tuners as well. Good bubble wrap, it's a box inside of a box. Good, uh, good packing job. I'm just gonna see if invoice, invoice has all the things on there, so hopefully it's all in this box. See what we get. All right. Oh, cables in here. Some packing paper. Padded. And there she is. Oh, wow, looks great. Got some heft to it too. This is a. Uh, I'll have to weigh them both, but this feels just as heavy as a Mexican that I have and have recently played. I'll do a more thorough review, but I can tell that the pole pieces don't line up too terribly well on the uh, neck pickup. But I will say that it looks like it's a, it's about as good as they could probably get it for where the hardware, what the hardware is. I don't know that it'll be a problem. I've never really had an issue with that. Uh, I know some people say that it's a problem, but at any rate, I'm, you know, I, I, there's a good chance I'll replace these pickups anyway. But uh, man, first impression out of the box is, I'm pretty pleased with how it all looks. I mean, I kind of bought it, to be honest, I, I kind of bought it uh, because I like the aesthetic of the, of the, uh, the way they treated this brown finish. You know, if you know anything about guitar finish, which you probably do since you're watching this, one good thing they do really well is market. They have great photos of the guitars, and, uh, you know, they make them look fantastic. And, and at least in this case, my first impression is it's not a lie. This thing looks fantastic. And actually, I'm, I, I don't like the headstock. I didn't like the headstock in the photos on, online either, but... Um, but it's, it seems like it's a quality that it's been, it's been built well. So, um, so strung out with XLs, obviously. Um, I've got one of their uh, cables, one of the cheaper ones. And I ordered some locking tuners, which are in here. They look like they're really long posts, though. Uh, and this is the package that comes with the guitar, the tremolo arm and cheap cable. All right, so yeah, um, be a little, you, you know, the, these guitars are distressed of all the finishes that on the strats anyway. This one is the one you can tell the least on. I mean, really, you can only see it in a couple spots on the edges, um, on both sides, and uh, that's it really. On the and and. It's, you know, if you like that kind of thing, I think it's very, it's pretty subtle. You have to kind of look for it on this particular stain. The other ones are a little more obvious, but I like the brown and man, I'm pretty stoked out of the box. We'll see. I'm going to do a more complete review. I'll attach it to this video. So like magic, it'll happen right away. Okay. We're back. Um, again, this is the, uh, SL 57 slick brand. Uh, sold and distributed through guitarfetish.com, known for Xavier guitars and all the good stuff. 
Okay, I've lived with this guitar for uh, 24 hours about. And I've played it for uh, probably three or four hours. And I am still pretty darn blown away by the value of this guitar. And and to be honest, beyond that, I'm just kind of blown away by the guitar itself. Um, I'm not going to get into the specs because those are all covered pretty well on Guitar Fetish. Um, I am looking at the video. The pick guard and the... Uh, the uh, hardware, the, the covers, the you know knobs, all the white stuff, is a little maybe a little bit more aged looking. At an angle, it kind of looks a little bit more like it actually is. On right, I've got some light in here, so it's a little bit washed out, but it's cool if you like a kind of a vintage look. Um, it's definitely got that. I love, absolutely love the finish, man. It's exactly what I was hoping it would be. Um, it's distressed. Uh, a little bit on the edges, but not too. It's pretty subtle for this, uh, for this, the brown stain. Uh, the other ones are, look a little bit more. They look cool, but they're uh, definitely uh, more obvious. Um, a few specs: uh, solid steel plate on the on the uh, trim, brass, kind of uh, vintage style uh, fender saddles, and a pretty big fat uh, block. Uh, brass block on the trim, which is great. Uh, lots of sustain. Before I get into show, to playing some sounds here, let me just tell you some mechanical things about it because that really is a big thing. I mean, I bought this guitar not not intending to do any sort of review, not intending to do anything except immediately take it all apart and <laughs> and salvage the good bits and put uh, Warmoth neck on, which uh, you know I may still do because I ordered that kind of to my exact likings. But let me tell you. This is a great guitar. It's great by any standard, I think. Uh, not just by a $220 standard. Um, I didn't take a, a, a good look at... I haven't opened up the pig guard yet, so I don't know. You know the pots, I, I can't tell you what they look like or if they're big and beefy or if they've used pushback wire, that kind of thing. Um, but everything's real solidly put together. There's no rattles, there's no buzzes with the hardware, uh, no loose nuts. It's solid, man. The body itself is solid. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels, it's got some heft. I don't know the weight. Uh, I'll try to put it up here again, but um, it's got to be close to the Mexican that I've got sitting right over here. The rosewood fingerboard and medium jumbo frets. I don't know what the size are. You know, probably 6105s, I think, right? That's kind of a medium jumbo. I don't know. They feel fantastic. Uh, in preparation for doing this, I actually went out and played a bunch of sewers and other guitars that cost way more than I could afford. You know, two grand, uh, $1,600, I think, were probably some of the cheaper ones that I played. Just to kind of get a litmus test of great stuff. And You know, I knew it wasn't going to be like that. Those feel like luxury cars when you play them, but... This guy, man, I'm telling you, it doesn't, it doesn't play like a $200 guitar. It plays, man. It, I, I honestly, I haven't had it in a long time, but I had some uh, Fender American Strats. I think this plays every bit as good, if not better, than some of those that I had. Um, more importantly than all that subjective stuff, uh, I set it up for myself, which I almost always do. This, I, I shim the neck, and I put a little shim in the po in the pocket which I got a great look at the pocket the pocket is tight as could be you can't get any more tight than this without it being a problem uh, maybe I just won the lottery like the uh, quality control lottery but it's fantastic so I shim the neck give it a little bit of a down downward angle uh, set up the you know and then and then set everything up for 11s which is what I have on here now and man it's the intonation is great although I will say uh, the intonation's great, but I am all the way up against these uh, screws. All the way up against them uh, to get the intonation there. So, you know, I had to shorten the, shorten the length of the string. So, but it's in. And it's, and it's really, it's right in tune. And intonation's set great. The, the, the... Action is set up great for how I like it with my 11s, which is, you know, they put the you put the quarter in there. It's a little higher than that for 11s for me. Um, when you put a quarter under the E strings, 
at the 12th fret. So um, I know you probably wouldn't want some sounds, but I, it, the mechanics are so important. You know, the tuners are great. They, they're, I don't know what the ratio is, but they hold tune great. I haven't had the, you know, aside from some string, uh, just breaking in some string stuff, breaking in some strings, I should say, I haven't had a problem at all. Not, not even a little bit. And the tuners are solid. When you take the tune, the string off the the tuner, there's no rattles. There's no pl you know play. They're a little bit tight compared to maybe some, you know, your usual Mexican tuners that uh, come on Mexican standard. But um, but they're not tough to turn. They're just they're just solid. And I you know I heard some people say they didn't like how hard these were to turn. I mean they're not. They're maybe a little bit tough comparatively. But I mean it's not hard. You know I think that. Maybe they'll break in a little bit, but they're smooth. I, I don't know. I, that, to me, they're, they're fine. So without further ado, let me get into some sounds and my take on the sounds. So uh, they make kind of a big deal about these pickups and that they're Earl Slick designed them and all that stuff. And he very well may have, and it, that could be all legit. I'll say this. Um, these sound better to me, and this is very subjective, but better than, than on my Mexican Standard. Uh, the Mexican Standard pickups are kind of useless in my opinion they're pretty harsh they got that uh really really um just not biting in a good way but just harsh harsh out of all three pickups these guys are kind of that way compared to maybe some higher end pickups to me but it's a it's a good solid sound i don't think there's anything about these pickups that you couldn't fix if you had a decent eq now i'm playing through a, a 65 deluxe um reverb reissue Fender and um, I've got some verb on and kind of my settings where I usually have them, which is about four. I'm in the uh, vibrato channel two, and uh, volume's about three or four, and treble's about four, and bass is about three, three and a half. And um, so I'll run through some of these things for you uh, without further ado, and that you've waited all this time. Um, this is the uh, neck. <laughs> Intonation is fantastic. So to me, that's not really creamy. I mean, it's it's cool and it's solid. I wouldn't say I'm blown away by the responsiveness, but it's certainly good more than usable and some folks may love it it's just not my exact preference for the neck I, I like a kind of a creamier tone maybe a little bit more telly like usually like a telly uh, neck pickup but that said it, it, it actually sounds I think it sounds good uh, you know that's again everything's subjective but it's solid there's no weirdnesses about it it sounds how it sounds up and down the neck. So second position, and this is where things get a little more interesting because I think the in-between positions, which I'm assuming are reverse wound, uh, well, that the middle pickups are reverse wound, I think they sound pretty darn good. You can hear that little chime coming through. You'll notice that... There is a little bit of string noise there, but there is also on my uh, $1,600 52 reissue telly. So, but for the most part, I mean, if you're playing it reasonable, All right, 
I know I'm uh, musically rattling here, but it's because it's fun to play. Middle position. Um, pretty forward, you know, especially compared to that middle position. A little bit quacky. I'm going to roll some tone and some volume off. It's about uh, just a hair off the volume. So, uh, second position, or fourth position, whatever, uh, these two guys, uh, full volume, full tone. So, speaking of telly, a little bit kind of telly-ish. This it kind of t this tone reminds me of some of the Michael Landau stuff when he does the the obviously in between uh, you know positions. I think it's a really good tone. Those two tones I think are really great. I don't know, not comparing them directly with you know some of the more expensive stuff, but and then finally the bridge. Of course, this is uh, there's no tone assigned to this. But um, you know it's aggressive. pretty cool so that's that's it in a nutshell i'm, I'm not going to do any distorted sounds because it's so that's so subjective you know pedal the way you play all that stuff the clean tones i think tell you more but at any rate it's been a long uh <laughs> review the bottom line for me is this it's a great guitar so there's only there are only two kind of more quality control type things that i could mention one i already told you about this little chunk out of here which you know that's a that's a I think a valid thing like you you could you could send that back and not be too much of a jerk by doing that. Um, by the way, I had to restart this, so it's gonna be uh, gonna look different, different lighting. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing might be my fault, and I don't even know if I'll be able to pick it up on this. There is a um, right here. I don't know if you can see it because I can't get any kind of white background or light background on it. There's a little dent indentation on the edge of the fretboard. To be full, uh, fully honest about it, that might be my fault. I took the neck off to do the thing, and I and and it kind of, you know, there was a cat issue, and that might be my problem. It doesn't affect playability at all. It's way off of where you'd, you know you'd be playing but uh, anyway those two things um beyond that aesthetically love the body love the way that the neck looks that's a silly thing maybe but you know aesthetics have their place uh i love i, I like the kind of the barely yellowed pick guard um you know and the only thing i don't like is this i'm not really a fan and no no uh disrespect to mr earl slick I, i'm not really a fan of Either the headstock or the logo, um, and I'm and aesthetically, I don't really like the fact that it's tilt back. But functionality-wise, it kind of rocks. Um, the tension, obviously, you don't have to have string trees, and uh, the break, the tension that that break gives you, I think, uh, I don't know. For me, I, I kind of feel like maybe there's, it helps with sustain. I'm sure there's plenty of articles written about that kind of thing. So, um, but 
I, like I said, I've got a warmth net coming. I just assumed I would need it to make this guitar a playable thing uh, for the stage, or for the studio. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. It plays great. You have to know how to set a guitar up. I mean, they're not going to, you know, you, you'd spend $200 to set up a guitar some some places, you know, like fully set. I mean, I'm talking about, I've, I've gone through everything. I've I set the tremolo up. You know, there were a few of these screws that were a little too tight, a few that were too loose. Basically, you know, from what I've, I've always done is these two guys on the outsides touch the base plate. The rest of them, are, you come up about a, you know, about a full turn, quarter turn, whatever. Um, they're just to keep them in place. These are the two that actually goes on. And I've got it set up to where there's a little bit of play both directions. And you heard me, you know, doing some... That's about as much as I'll ever do for me. You know, I, I, I just... It's not my bag uh, beyond that. So your mileage may vary as far as the trim is concerned for for the ones I've owned and set up this way man it's totally solid I mean it's just as good literally just as good as any of the Americans that I've uh, that I've had and set up so my point is you gotta know how to set up a guitar or you gotta bring it into somebody if you're expecting it to come out of a cardboard box and for it to play great I mean it was playable out of the box for sure the action was high and yada yada after a good setup it plays fantastic and I and I and it feels solid. You know, that's a tough thing to to get across in a video, but it feels it just feels solid. It doesn't feel like a squire. It feels like a real guitar. Because it is. I mean it it is. There, there you go. Get over the headstock, uh, get over the logo. And if you need yourself a cheap strat, I haven't ever played a strat this cheap that was this good. And I and if you added another two hundred bucks to it, I think I'd still feel the same way. New, you know, you can find some great deals out there on Craigslist and stuff. But if you want to, if you're looking for a new guitar to mod uh, or just to play, man, it's great. I'll uh, I'll do another one once I uh, replace the neck and you know the other stuff, and I'll let you know how how the how they compare and contrast but I'm telling you you're gonna dig it you're gonna dig it